What's going on everybody? My name is Tatro and I've actually been asking around if people would be interested in this because every time I share a piece of gear with cool stickers on it, people ask, how do you do it? How do you do it? I thought it was relatively simple, but you guys wanted a tutorial, so I figured that's what we would do today. It's a really simple process, but you guys had a couple questions. Where do I get my stickers? How do you apply them to the actual gear? And we're gonna actually do that today with my Launch Key Mini, which is currently stickerless. But it's one of my favorite keyboards, so I wanna customize it and give it that Tatro flair. So without further ado, let's go talk stickers. All right, so the main question is, where do you get all these stickers? Some are given to me as gifts, some I bought online, some came with gear. These really high quality ones in particular came from redbubble.com. This is not a sponsorship, it's just where I got them. You can search for different characters, different movies and whatnot. One thing I like about some of these stickers is that they're cut in the shape of the actual form. So that's the shape of the ghost right there. Unlike this Darth Maul one, which is cut like a rectangle, so it doesn't make it an ideal candidate for this project. This Tatro sticker here is not cut to form, but it's got straight lines you could probably cut if you needed to use it. The circuit is probably one of my favorite pieces of gear that I've customized with stickers. It's got four different stickers. The astronaut, the tentacles, which are really hard to like cut super straight because they're so curvy. And then the T-Rex skull and the green skull is one of my favorite stickers. The Akai MBK Mini, the Blackout Edition, looks dope on its own, but add this Darth Vader skull sticker with the black and white aesthetic, looks really cool. It also kind of overlaps over the top, if you can see that there. I don't like to do that because it's easy for the sticker to peel off. I've even customized my notebooks here with some stickers. Oh, look, another Tetro sticker. Control Freak, very cool. All right, but what we came here to do was add some stickers to the Launch Key Mini. So let's find some open real estate. Like this top corner, for example, is a perfect spot for a sticker. And then looking elsewhere on the controller, under the knobs would be a good spot to try to put one. The tool that we're gonna be using today is this really simple but sharp uh, razor blade that you can get in some pharmacies. Some people use them for shaving. They're kind of like a scalpel. Uh, but you can usually get them in like a CVS or something. They're very sharp, so just be careful. So since we said we're gonna put some stickers under the knobs, we're gonna start by removing the knobs. On lots of gear, you can very easily, carefully wiggle and turn these knobs to pull them out very carefully, but just be careful because you don't know if gear can have knobs removed, which with the Blackout MPK Mini, I wasn't able to remove the knobs. They were just, they felt stuck. I tried to use the little scalpel to get under there and pop them off, but could not do it, which is odd because on the proper MPK Mini, I could pretty easily get those knobs off using the scalpel to kind of get under there. The knobs come right off. So just be careful, don't force anything. Back to the launch key here. We've got all the knobs off, so that's easy. Let's first put our little ghost sticker up in the corner, which is gonna be the easiest spot for us to put a sticker because there's not a lot to cut around, only a couple buttons. So first I'm just gonna apply the sticker and in the spots where I'm not gonna have to cut, the sticker is just gonna stick there and I'm gonna try to place it as carefully as possible so it's straight with the controller and start pressing down on the areas that I won't need to cut or lift up again. So those are kind of permanently stuck there and it's holding the position. Now you notice the buttons underneath, those are where we're gonna have to do some cutting. And a lot of these controllers, it's fairly easy to do, especially if you have an opening. There's little gaps between the buttons and the plastic of the controller that this blade fits perfectly in. So if I smooth down the sticker near that edge and I just carefully run the blade inside of that groove between the button and the plastic, I can make a really clean cut. And I do that across the top of the button and up the side of the button in that little groove. And I can remove that little piece that was the corner of the button very, very easily. Next, I'm cutting around a couple buttons that are completely under the sticker, so I don't have an easy opening like with the last one. So I'm just using the blade to try to feel where that crevice is between the button and the plastic. And when I feel like I found it, I use a gentle amount of force to just push right into that crevice and cut around it the same exact way around all four sides of the button. 
start smoothing down the edges and now just cutting off these little tips that overlap these bottom buttons here. It's worth noting that wherever you put your sticker, you're gonna cover up whatever text is on the controller. So just make sure you know your controller and you know the functions or you're prepared to you know, Google what those functions are because it's gonna be blocked by your sticker. Smooth out the edges and now we've pretty much got our ghost planted there. And I think it looks pretty good. We've got really clean edges cut around those buttons, a few bubbles, so it didn't do it perfectly, but the more careful and patient you are, the closer you can get it to perfect. All right, next, the hardest part is choosing the sticker for the knobs. Now, obviously that sticker is ginormous. That's not gonna really work well. Um, maybe this ghost could work, but I don't love how it's kind of vertically oriented. I wanted something more wide to go across a few of those knobs. And I need to make sure that I can stick up between the knobs or else the knobs are just gonna block whatever the sticker is. Darth Vader looks like he can fit pretty well. It looks like his head is small enough to fit between the buttons. He can kind of hang between the pads. So let's go ahead and put that one on. Carefully positioning so the head is in between knobs, like I said, and then cutting around the circle kind of crevice of the knobs. There is an edge in there, and in most of these controllers where there's either buttons or knobs, you can get the blade in and you're really just following gently the edges of the buttons so that you can get a clean cut. Now I just want to put the knobs back on and make sure that they can turn easy. There's no plastic part of the sticker stuck in there and they work pretty well. So it seems like we've successfully cut around the little knob crevices. So since we're done with the knobs, we're on to cutting around the pads. We're using the same technique as before, fitting the blade into the little crevice between the squares and the plastic. It fits pretty perfectly. Just be careful that you don't accidentally stab one of your pads. They are squishy and the blade could probably cut or puncture them. And there you have it, just peeling off that last piece. And it looks like now Darth Vader, mummy Darth Vader is behind the pads. It's always good to go around and smooth those edges because they might not be down all the way. I use the butt end of the scalpel for this part and it's pretty stuck on there, but I think it looks good. Just gonna get any extra little sticker out of those little edges very carefully, but pretty clean cuts on this one. The Darth Vader sticker was pretty easy to work with. So yeah, I think the Launch Key Mini now being customized makes a pretty good fit to the collection here. What do you think? Let me know in a comment down below. All right, so Launch Key Mini now fully stickered up with two stickers. You know, you don't have to go crazy. I like adding lots of stickers, as many as possible, but if there's not a lot of space for stickers, don't go overboard and make it look bad. So we had two solid pieces of real estate open for stickers, one here by the knobs, one over here where there's lots of open space. And I think it looks pretty good. I also like that we've got like a mummy and a ghost, so it's kind of thematic. One thing I wish is that the Darth Vader mummy had been outlined in some kind of white because the clear looks a little odd. You can see bubbles a lot more easily, but I still like the way it looks. I mean, even if you look at the Akai and PK Mini, there was really only room for one sticker here. And it's a black and white sticker that goes along with kind of the blackout theme of the MPK here. So I think aesthetically, it looks pretty dope. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you wanna support the channel, you can click any of the Amazon links down below. There are affiliate links, so you can buy yourself a piece of gear or even some household supplies, literally anything using those links. And I get a little kickback and it helps support the channel. You can also pick up Tatro stickers for your gear at tatro.com slash merch. I'll leave a link in the description. So by picking up a sticker or a hoodie, you are really helping out the channel and making it so I can bring more videos and more information out to home studio producers. And of course, if you don't have any cash, that's fine too, because you can always click subscribe if you enjoy live electronic music performances, tutorials, and content to make you a more productive producer. And even just giving this video a thumbs up or leaving a comment shows me that you're there and that you support the channel. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.